good afternoon, everyone. I have a question for you all today. Who here fears failure? Anyone? Who here wants to try out new things, but is discouraged by the fear of failure? Well, you are not alone. Today, I would like to share three stories from my childhood, which stand out and epitomize how I let the fear of failure control my life. I've learned a lot from this event, and I believe by sharing my story, we all can learn something from it. To begin, let me take you way back to when I was in fifth grade. I desperately wanted to join my school soccer team. At the time, almost every fifth grader wanted to become the next Messi. I believe my fifth grade soccer team was how I was going to make my dream a reality. But during the time of tryout, instead of me sh showing up on the field, I locked up myself in the classroom. I was so scared I wouldn't be good enough that I decided not to even try. I knew if I hadn't even tried, I could not fail. At that moment, I, was very, I, was, I felt so bad. My second perceived failure, that's me, that's me right there. <laughs> my second perceived failure came during my junior year of high school. I had been selected by my school to give a talk at a career fair event. This was a very big, like, big honor for my 13-year-old self. You might be able to recognize, hey, Franklin, if you have been selected for this talk, that means you might be doing something right. But again, I let the fear of messing up the talk consume me so much that I decided not to show up. My third and final setback ultimately represents a turning point in my life. During my final year of high school, I was selected by my school to represent them in the National Science and Math Quiz competition. I was so excited that they had selected me, and I initially felt triumph in my achievement. But guess what? I decided not to compete again. I let someone else take my coveted spot. You might be you might, you might be saying in your mind that, Franklin, how is this a turning point in your life? It sounds like just any, other, any of the other events you just shared with us today. But wait, I'm not done with the story. That day, I watched my team lose the semi-final round of competition. I realized I had so much I could contribute. And I felt complete shame that I had made the fear of failure completely consume me that I couldn't compete for my school. I actually could have won for my school, but I'd already missed the chance. At this point, I realized that I was letting failure control my life. I knew I had to change my narrative to learn to co confront my fears. Given my overwhelming fear of failure, I know you might be surprised at why I'm standing here today giving this talk to hundreds of people. Actually, the fact that I'm standing here is a testament to my growth. By reflecting on my past fears, I realized that these past fears had translated into lost opportunities for me to improve myself as a person and my capabilities. More recently, I realized that not only did I let myself down, but also I lost the opportunity to create meaningful impact in the lives of others. I am here because my desire to help people and to help others, help me overcome my fears. Now that I have your attention, let me, tell, let me tell you a little bit about where I'm from and how this little impact helped me to create, and how this little event helped me to create a meaningful impact in the lives of others. I am from Ghana, West Africa. Growing up as one of the youngest children in a large family, I never imagined myself to be in the position to facilitate real change. Because everyone in my family was preoccupied, I had no one to help me, to motivate me, to explore my interest. I watched my family struggle from day to day in almost every facet of our lives, more importantly, to help give me an education. Because of my family's financial situation, I hardly watched television. I couldn't also afford a mobile phone, 
I would go to school and hear my friends talk about social media and other technologies. But I had no experiences of my own. I always felt one step behind. While, my fam while technology was changing my continent and the world at large, I remained oblivious. I received my first Android mobile phone during my first year of high school. This changed everything for me. While trying to get a hang of this new technology was overwhelming at first. I was excited about the endless possibilities for learning. Th that was the first time I had the opportunity to use WhatsApp, a social media and texting platform. At last, I had a tool to communicate with my friends at school. The second app I used on my phone, my new phone, was YouTube. YouTube became my most important teacher. While most of my friends were watching funny videos on YouTube, I remember the first thing I searched up was how to code. With the help of YouTube educational videos, I self-taught myself how to build various technologies, such as app, mobile phone apps and different hardware. I immediately became confident in my tech abilities. I wanted to create, and now I possess the knowledge and the mindset to do just that. I was inspired to commit myself to impact rather than let fear run my life. Most of the time, when people want to solve a bigger problem, they look at the bigger picture. This makes sense since people want to solve a whole issue just at once. However, this is not the right mindset to approach a problem. Actually, larger problems, larger problems are a collection of smaller problems, and for me, I believe you can make so much more impact by tackling a small part of a larger problem. Let me show you how I figured out I could solve a smaller part of a big problem back in Ghana. I realized there was a huge gap in the Ghanaian education system. I remember watching a video of an eight-year-old in the US building robots, and I was shocked that other countries gave such opportunities to such young individuals. In Ghana, there were no such entry-level programs. Access to technology was a luxury limited to a few. With this frustrating truth in mind, I decided to join a startup in Ghana called Hexohub. Hexohub is made up of a group of young engineers. Actually, I met my team during a research competition. Though they were competing against me for my rival high school, we came to realize that we all had a common vision to use technology to solve educational issues in Ghana. We were so eager to come together to think of very small ideas to make a bigger impact. When thinking about the issues with technology in Ghana, we knew that whatever we, ha we would build had to be affordable, accessible, scalable, but also powerful. We knew that the device we would make how to survive the conditions in Ghana, which include lack of electrical power, being able to be taken to school, and lack of access to essential resources. With this goal in mind, we set out to build a portable computer. After lots and lots of YouTube videos, ranging from how people built iPads and basic information about computer hardware, we just we came up with a solution, our prototype, the Hex Prime 1. So the Hex Prime 1 is a credit card size single board computer with the sole aim of improving the teaching and learning of computer science in both the classroom and at the workplace. The development board can run a full version of Windows 10. It's terrible charged and possesses an Intel quad-core microprocessor. It has effective connectivity with three USB ports, Bluetooth 4.0, and integrated Wi-Fi. More importantly, the device has pre-installed educational videos so that anyone anywhere can conduct research, learn how to code, and access lecture videos. You just connect the device to a screen, and it begins, it begins to work its magic, just like any other computer. During our pilot program for the Hex Prime 1, we had about 200 students coming out to use our technology. 
This was a very big breakthrough for us, but more especially me. One of the greatest highlights was when we had, we had students call us and tell us about their experiences with our technology, telling us about how they used our, our resource to learn how to code and to set up robotics clubs at their various high schools. My biggest fulfillment was when I learned that one of the, one of the high schools had made use of our resources in helping them win the National Science and Technology Fair. With the access to our coding resources and lecture materials, these children were able to build a greenhouse. At this point, I realized that real impact didn't really require any great skills, but just a move away from fear. I was surprised that our small idea, both literally and figuratively, was able to impact so many students in Ghana. At the moment, I'm a freshman at Duke, but I'm actively looking for new ways to improve our technology. During weekly Skype meetings with my team, we discuss new ways of reducing the cost of our product, increasing the resources on it, and growing the number of users. The current price of our Hex Prime 1 is about $300, which may be considered affordable in the US, but in Ghana, it's really considered a hefty, a hefty burden. We have a long way to go, but I am proud of what we've created so far. Thankfully, my team is not the only one who has recognized the potential in Ghana when, they are giving, when students are given the, the right resources. Google and Microsoft have also identified this potential and are investing time and resources into the region. Google has already set up an artificial intelligence lab in Accra, Ghana, and has an office in Nigeria. Microsoft plans to have an office in South Africa by the end of the year. I couldn't be much happier about the progress, but I'm made to think that my team and I had a role to play in our own small ways. Amidst the rapid changes and development, I can stand here today and say to you that I am proud of myself. I am proud I managed to overcome my fears. I am proud I managed to change my fate and create something meaningful to impact the lives of others. I am proud I helped in putting smiles on the faces of Ghana's young future engineers. Though this may sound cliche, my biggest advice would be to, to you today would be that go out there and try that new thing you've been wanting to do. Dedicate yourself to it. Your fears and failures may try to push you down, but in those moments, it is important to focus on the impact you can have on the lives of other people. You might be helping only one individual, but you should remember that real impact just requires a small catalyst. I will end by saying that real impact just requires the belief that success comes from trying something new wholeheartedly. Thank you.